Welcome back to Decked Out. On today's episode, we are joined by Maldhound for a very special Early Access Bloomboro episode. Thank you to our sponsor for today's episode, Wizards of the Coast. Thank you so much for getting us this product ahead of time so that we can bring this special episode to you. That's enough for now. Let's go ahead and see these adorable Bloomboro commanders. Hello, everybody. I'm Maldhound, and you can find me all over the internet touching cards, attempting to touch your hearts, but most importantly, telling you whether or not I'd touch your commander's parts. Today, I'm playing Bello, Bard of the Brambles, which is Gruel beat down with a twist. Instead of creatures, I will be bludgeoning my opponents with high-end luxury goods and drawing cards for the trouble. I'm Airbo, and today I'm playing Zinnia, Valley's Voice. She's a flyer and gets a little bigger if you have one power creatures, but the best part about her is the offspring. You get to copy your creatures when they come into play if you pay a small premium, and then you get to double their ETB triggers, and those incidentally have one power, so Zinnia gets bigger herself. She's pretty fly for a Jess guy. Hello everyone, I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today I am playing Hazel of the Root Bloom. She's going to be making a bunch of extra tokens, treasures, food, squirrels, you name it. And then we can take advantage of those extra tokens with mana. And once I've got a huge board, the aristocrat strategy should take over. I'm Veggie Wagon, and today I'm going to be playing Mrs. Bumbleflower. This is a political group hug deck, which means the real strategy lies in my charming personality and bribes. This deck uses the new gift mechanic to help my opponents beat each other up while I set up for some brand new alternate win conditions. Special thank you to today's episode sponsor, Wizards of the Coast. Thanks to Wizards, we are able to bring you these early access episodes weeks before the set comes out. And the best way to let Wizards know that you're enjoying us doing this kind of content is by liking the video, commenting on anything that you're enjoying in the episode, and clicking the link in the description, which will bring you to all of the Bloomboro information you could possibly need. That's enough from us for now. Let's go ahead and check out these new adorable Bloomboro decks. Welcome to the table. Let's see who goes first. 17? 16. 12. 12. Oh, that means we're good time, boys. Yes. That's right. That's yes. <laughs> This is my set, and that means I finally get to go first. I will draw. Uh, I'm gonna play a temple, which will allow me to scry one. I'll keep it on top, and pass. Okay, I'll play this clifftop retreat tapped, and pass the turn. I'm gonna play this thriving grove. I'm going to name blue, so it makes blue and green, and then pass. I'm gonna play the most dangerous card in magic, a forest. Or sorry, second most dangerous card in magic, and pass. Oh, your audience is gonna come for you. Hang on, what's the first? You'll see. Okay. Second forest. No, that was the bit. Cut that, cut that, cut that. Cut that, cut that. Cut that. <laughs> I will play a swamp and a Golgari signet for turn and pass. Yeah, no one should ramp. I'm gonna play this Ferris Lake as my land for turn and I'm gonna pay two for a Mind Stone. <laughs> and then I'll pass. <laughs> I'm gonna play this exotic orchard uh, and use Airball's Clifftop Retreat to play this Hoof Prince of the Stag. It's an enchantment. When I draw a card, I can put a Hoof Print counter on it, and then I can pay three and remove four Hoof Print counters from it to create a 4-4 four, four Flying Elemental. Pass. I'm now going to play the most dangerous card in Magic, a second forest. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to tap two to explore, so I get to play an additional land this turn and draw a card. Uh, and then I'm gonna play a mountain, which is very reasonable and fair and based, and I will pass. All right, well, I will tap the Golgari Signet, and I'm gonna play a Tireless Provisioner. It's a 3-2 with landfall that says whenever a land enters the battlefield under my control, I get to create a treasure or a food token, which I do indeed have. Land for turn will be a Woodland Cemetery. God, they sequenced correctly. I sure did. That's why you can't play Commander with a limited player. <laughs> <laughs> they, they play Fundamentals? Yeah. What? <laughs> what is this? I'll choose a treasure for turn, uh, and then I'm gonna tap my Woodland Cemetery for a Haywire Might. It's a 1-1 one, one that says when it dies, I get to gain two life. I can also pay a green to sacrifice it to exile target non-creature artifact or non-creature enchantment. And that'll be my turn, I'll pass. Wow, Veggie. Your enchantment's mm -hmm. definitely in trouble. That's Which, certainly the most problematic enchantment that will be played all game. Just watch out till I draw my fourth card and spend three <laughs> mana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start by playing a Blade Splicer. When it enters the battlefield, I'll make a 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token, and it gives all of my golems first strike. And I'll play this Sulphur Falls tap because I don't control an island or a mountain. 
and I'll pass the turn. All right. Untap and draw. We're gonna hoof it for one. Three more cards. I'm going to play this forest, and then I'm gonna pay three for Chasm Skulker. One, one, whenever I draw a card, I put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And when it dies, I make X one, one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is the number of counters on it. All right, everybody, it's gonna get a little hot. You ready? Tarot reading time. This card doesn't matter. Land, gruel spell slinger moment. I, I actually do have to tap this right. Mana rock. Talisman of Impulse, we all know this. Not stopping there, the Trash Man, better known as Bellow Bard of the Brambles. This is a legendary raccoon, and during my turn, my non-equipment artifacts and non-aura enchantments that are mana value four or greater are four four elemental creatures in addition to their other types, and they are indestructible, have haste, and whenever they deal combat damage to a player, I get to draw a card. It's actually blue, it was all along. Fuzzy Trash Bandit. I'm gonna pay three, and I'm gonna start with a Chatterfang, Squirrel General. That's nuts. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> did, you, did you get it? It's a 3-3 three, three with Forest Walk. It says, if one or more tokens would be created under my control, I get to add that many 1-1 one, one squirrels as well. I can also pay a black, sacrifice X squirrels, and target creature gets plus X, minus X until end of turn. Chatterfang was a great draw. It can kill so many of the creatures that are on board right now, plus two of my opponents do have forests. And then thankfully, I do have a land for turn. It'll be a Baron Moor, comes into play tapped, which will trigger my Tireless Provisioner, giving me a second treasure and triggering my Chatterfang, which will give me a squirrel friend. Bring it, I will bramble you up <laughs> right now. Provisioner is coming to Maldhound because you're not gonna block. And my Haywire Mite is coming to Veggie because he's not gonna block. Careful, you catch these hooks in three turns. <laughs> yeah, you just wait. Yeah, three I, turns. I take that trade. You're not gonna get those hooks otherwise. <laughs> I'll take one. I'm so tempted to derail my whole curve. <laughs> just, 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 I'll take three. Magic fundamentals, spite. Yeah, uh, <laughs> spite is a magic fundamental. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and just get a little insurance on board as well. I will pay one of my treasures, and we're also gonna play Azulaport Cutthroat. A 1-1 one -one that says whenever another creature I control dies, each opponent is gonna lose a life and I'll gain a life. Airball, you trying to be a good time boy right now? We got two is, at the table. Is that allowed? <laughs> we got two at the And that'll be it. I think that's a pretty good start. I'll pass. My first action as a good time boy. We're gonna go ahead and ship the Phyrexian Golem at Nerd Girl. Oh my god, he's taking his game actions in main phase two. <laughs> Magic fundamentals. He's a competitive player. <laughs> no blocks. All right, no effects. Take One, three. two, three. And I actually had a reason to wait till main phase two. We're gonna pay two. To chart a course. Draw two and then discard a card unless I attack this turn. All right, well, I think this is probably the best I can do. We're gonna pay two for a Loyal Warhound. It's a 3-1 with Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than me, and they do, I get to search for a basic planes, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. I'll put that planes into play tapped, and then I will miss my land drop and pass. Oh, oh. you got it, it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> that counts. We'll draw. I'll put a counter on Hoofprints of the Stag and on Chasm Skulker. I'm just gonna play this Glacial Fortress tapped and then pay one for a wizard class. I currently have no maximum hand size. I can level up to draw two cards and then level up again. Whenever I draw a card, I put a plus one plus one counter on a creature I control. But that is not now. Pass the turn. I'm gonna play a forest. We will tap two forests for a mind stone. Then we will tap both our mana rocks and two mountains for an alchemist's talent. This is a class enchantment. Uh, when it enters, just enters, uh, I get to create two tapped treasure tokens, which I will make now. I can level it up to make my treasures sacrifice for two mana instead of one, and I can level it up again uh, to make my spells deal damage when I cast them if I spent mana from a treasure to cast it. But for now, all that's gonna happen is that this will become a 4-4 with indestructible haste, and I can beat cards out of people because it is an enchantment with four mana or more for its mana value. I'm gonna swing at Nerd Girl. Yeah, no blocks. Hmm. 
Oh, you get to draw, my bad. Yeah, well, womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the turn. Okay. All right, we're gonna start with four mana, and I'm just gonna play my commander, Hazel of the Root Bloom. She's a three five that allows me to tap it and pay two life, and I can tap up to X untapped tokens I control to add X mana in any combination of colors. Also at the beginning of my end step, I can create a token that's a copy of another token that I control. If that token is a squirrel, instead I get to create two copies of it. Let's go ahead and play a land for turn, which with my tireless provisioner is gonna give me an additional treasure token, which will trigger my chatter fang, and it'll give me an additional squirrel. Let's go ahead and move to combat. And you know, Maltown's gonna get that forest walk. Welcome back to Nurgirl Beats Up Maltown. <laughs> Fine. It's three, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and move to my end step. Hazel will trigger, and I'll choose to copy a squirrel token, which will give me two squirrel tokens instead, and then Chatterfang will double those squirrel tokens, giving me four total squirrels, putting me to six. Nerd Girl having Chatterfang, Zulaport, and her commander out terrifies me. I was ready for a cutesy animal beatdown, not the squirrel ritual sacrifice brigade. So tell me a little more about these indestructible 4 fours, Maltound. Do what you want. You cannot hurt me <laughs> in any way that matters. <laughs> I have a hand full of hammers that I am waiting to throw at you Mario Brothers style. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play this command tower as my land for turn. And then we'll pay four for the sad robot himself. Solemn Simulacrum is here. When he enters, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it into play, tapped, and then shuffle. And then when he dies, I get to draw a card. I'll put this island into play tapped. And I think I... Hmm. We're good time boys. What was that yeah. glance for? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I had a little nerd girl moment where like I can't throw damage oh, yeah, away. Damage on yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the value. Uh, but I, I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. You should totally play magic that way. The games go so... We're not here to yeah, mess around. But I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a pretty good win rate and it usually starts with killing Maltown. <laughs> <laughs> That's just science. Yeah, it's just science. Many <laughs> empires have been built upon the bones of my dead body. <laughs> well, one empire has been built on that. <laughs> All right, well, I think I'm just going to pass. We'll leave that damage on the table. Chicken. <laughs> I'm going to draw. That's another hoof. And a counter on Chasm Skulker. I'm going to play this overflowing basin, and then I'm just going to pay five? to play Cast Off, the adventure of Romcloak Giant to destroy all non-giant creatures. Hmm. These seem like all normal sized creatures, so I think they're all destroyed. Um, I don't want you to get left with some one ones, Veggie. I can't allow you to be the only one with stuff. So I'll pay a green and we're gonna sack three of my squirrels to shoot the Skulker, mm -hmm. which will trigger my Zulaport Cutthroat. Everybody will take three, I'll gain three. And I'm gonna sack the Haywire Mite uh, to exile a non-creature artifact or a non-creature enchantment. Now the question is, is what am I more afraid of? Probably the Mind Stone. Uh, you know, we're gonna target Veggie's creature making enchantment. And I'll also get to gain an additional two life from that and, and one because one of my creatures died. And everybody will take the one. I don't like this. All right, everything's destroyed. Get it out of here. Yep. And I'm gonna have seven creatures be destroyed, which will be seven triggers from Zulaport. I've taken my seven. I'll gain seven. And I will get a death trigger from Sad Robot. I'll draw my card. Pass the turn. I'm gonna untap and we are going to dramatically change creative direction now that everything is dead. First, I'm going to cast the Instant Adventure Fungus Frolic, which lets me make two 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature tokens. Basically like athlete's foot the instant. <laughs> yeah, but like fun. All right, I'm then going to tap four mana and bring the Bright Cap Badger back from their adventure. So now each fungus and sapperling I control taps for a green mana and at the beginning of my end step, I get to make a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. And I will pass to my end step, at which point I will make a 1-1 one, one sapperling creature token. Do your worst. I'm gonna go ahead and just pay six to replay my commander. Hazel of the Root Bloom is back. Uh, I'll just move to my end step, and on the end step, I will get to, to 
copy a token that I control, and I will get an additional treasure. I'll play this Plains as my land for turn. And it's time to cast my commander, Zinnia Valley's Voice. It's a 1-3 flyer, and it gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other creatures I control with base power 1, and it gives creature spells I cast offspring 2, which means I can pay an additional 2 as I cast it. If I do, I get a copy of that creature when it enters the battlefield. That's a 1-1. One, one. And they left off one piece of important rules text. Um, I don't know why, maybe they ran out of space. But you can't actually have two creatures with offspring next to each other on your play map. You gotta keep them separated. Oh, you gotta okay. keep them well, separated. That changes my next turn. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've jumped nerd girl in the order. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna pay two for a Polywog Prodigy, and I will pay the additional two for its offspring cost. It's a 1-3 with Evolve. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell with mana value less than its power, draw a card. It's a Polywog. I used to teach swim lessons at the YMCA, and I taught the little kids, and we were called the Polywogs. That's, that's nice. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> and because I paid the offspring cost, I will actually get a 1-1 one, one copy of the Polywog Prodigy. And yeah, we'll pass the turn from there. I'm gonna play this island, and then I'm gonna pay five for Mr. Foxglove. It's a three five with lifelink. Whenever Mr. Foxglove attacks, draw cards equal to the number of cards in defending player's hand minus the number of cards in your hand. If you didn't draw any cards this way, then you can put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield. I could not ask for a better creature right now. Mr. Foxglove will pad my life total, keep my hand full, and doesn't really look like a threat since it's not dealing much damage. Huh. Cute. <laughs> I was so with it until the last, <laughs> until that last little bit of, oh, if you don't draw any cards, <laughs> what about any, any guy or, yeah. or gal for Just free? don't have two cards in your hand. So on Veggie's end step, because I'm a little concerned about your mana situation, we're going to exile your badger. Mushroom, mushroom. But I got a turn for you. But I got a turn for you, Mr. Abandon the Good Time Boys, to get rid of my ramp. But he ramped you to get rid of I your ramp. I did ramp you. Oh boy. Oh boy, did you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I. Play Galta Primal Hunger. <laughs> oh. It is a 12 12 with trample. Yep. It is cost reduced by the children of the card you so brazenly exiled on the previous end step. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It gave birth to sapperlings? Don't ask. Basically, yeah. you don't know what happens <laughs> underneath the badger kilt. <laughs> I pass the turn. I'm gonna start by paying two life and tapping my commander, which will allow me to tap my treasures for some extra mana. And I will start with a poison tipped archer. A two, three with reach and death touch. And whenever another creature dies, each opponent is gonna lose a life. And I'll tap four more for a Rasta of the Endless Web. She's a three, five with reach that says whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, I get to create a two, one spider with reach. I'm gonna go ahead and play a land for turn, which will be a bog, and I'll move to my end step, triggering Hazel. I will get an additional treasure token. All right, I think this is the best I can do. We're gonna pay two for Felwar Stone. It's another mana rock. And then we're going to pay five for a Cloud Blazer, and we'll pay the additional two for its offspring cost. It's a 2-2 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, I gain two life and draw two cards, and that's gonna happen twice. So I'll gain four, draw four. So the first Cloud Blazer is a 2-2, the second is a 1-1, one, one. so only the first one will trigger my two Polywogs, but they will grow to two power. And then I'll play this Castle Ardenvale. It's a land that I can tap and pay four into to make a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. We're gonna go to combat. Somebody's getting goosed. Yeah, can't swing at Nerd Girl too much reach over there, but Zinnia's gonna come Veggie's way. Ah, uh, mm. Yeah, I'll take four. For Commander. <gasps> we back on Good Time Boys. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. When did I get off of Good Time You're Boys? You're still on, we're all on. And then I'll pass to Veggie. 
Well, I'll go to combat, and I'm going to attack Airball with Mr. Foxglove. Uh, when it attacks, I'm going to draw cards equal to the difference in our hands. I have three. So you'll draw three. That's a lot of card draw. Hurts to see other people live your dream. Yeah. I'll block with the copy cloud laser. That's good for me. Is that because you need another copy token available? It would help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play a prairie stream. It's my land for turn. And it's time for Miss Bumbleflower. Sounds like a Bridgerton character. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about Miss Bumbleflower? Miss Benedict Bumbleflower is a 1-5 with Vigilance. Whenever you cast a spell, target opponent draws a card, and I put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. It gains flying until end of turn, and if it's the second time that this ability is resolved this turn, I draw two cards. That's pretty cool. We're gonna get a flying 12-12 Galta. We could. We certainly could. Get you with that good day, mate. <laughs> Galta notoriously. Yeah. <laughs> An outback Galta, creature, yeah. Notoriously <laughs> Australian. I'll just pass. I have an important rules clarification about Poison Tip Archer, uh, and that is what if it just died? I cast Spine of Ish Sa, and when it enters, I destroy target permanent, and it's going to be the Poison Tip Archer. Okay, so if the Poison Tip Archer is not on the battlefield, then its, uh, it's triggered ability does not trigger from the graveyard, if that helps. Wow, that's so cool. The more you know. Okay, so it gets destroyed? Yeah, it gets destroyed. Uh, and then I'm going to tap my remaining three mana and sacrifice my two treasures, one of which will blow up for red to bring Bello back out. And that will mean that I now have two four four elemental creatures with both my spine because it's mana value seven and my alchemist talent. I will then move to combat and I am going to swing all of these things at Nerd Girl. So that's going to be a 12, 12, a 4, 4, a 4, 4. I will use a Rasta to block one of the 4, 4s, and I will take 16. Yes, and then I will draw a card since one of my 4, 4s will get through. And that will be my turn. I'm going to pay 3 to start my turn with a Woe Strider. Woe. Strider. It's a 3-2, and when he enters, I get to get an 0-1 goat token. I can also sacrifice another creature to scry one, and it has escape. I can pay five, exile four cards from my graveyard, and I can bring it back with some counters on it. I think I have to kind of hang out here, so I'm gonna move to my end step. I'm gonna have Hazel target the goat token. So I will get a copy of that, uh, and I'll pass my turn. I'll play this island as my land for turn, and then I'll pay five and two more for Siege Gang Commander for its offspring cost. When Siege Gang Commander enters, create three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. You can pay two to sacrifice a goblin and basically fling it at your face. Two damage to any target. So we're going to get a copy of the Siege Gang Commander, and we will get six oh. tokens. Oh. Holy <laughs> Jiminy Christmas! <laughs> So for those keeping score, that puts Zinnia at one, two, three, nine, ten 10 power in the air. Let's make it more. Here's three for Thopter Engineer. When it enters, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and artifact creatures I control have haste. When the Thopter Engineer enters the battlefield, I'm gonna get this Thopter, and I will also evolve my Polywog Prodigy copy, and that'll give us an additional two points with Zinnia in the air. All right, and I think I'm gonna spread the love a little bit. Maldhound, this Zinnia is coming at you. Crocky, mate, you sure about that? Hey, so I keep hearing this term, good time boys, I think yes, it is? We, yeah, we are good time boys. Oh, okay. We've been good time boys. I'm gonna pay three to spread these broken wings and learn to fly again. <laughs> I'd like to destroy target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. I think I think a two-shot Zinnia uh, is bad for the table. Before that happens, I do have a Mrs. Bumbleflower trigger. <laughs> Whenever you cast this. Why spell, did she get so ill all of a sudden? I don't know. I, <laughs> that's all British. It was more British. You, yeah. Have you seen the food? <laughs> Mrs. Dinglehopper, uh, she's going to <laughs> give one of you a card draw. I think it's gonna be a double good time, boys, because 
if you have more cards in your hand, that's going to be good for me on my it turn. It is going to be good for you. So yeah. this one, you can draw a card. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, it's more. We'll be coming for you. I thought I was going to get that one. I also put a plus one plus one counter on a creature, and it gains flying. And I think that makes sense for Mister. Sorry, <clears throat> Mister Foxglove, uh, <laughs> since he has lifelink. Uh, and then that's that's all for now. The Broken Wings will trigger a Rasta, and I will indeed get a bonus little Spider. All right, Zinnia's dead. It would have been really nice to clock Maltan for 10 commander damage there, but even as I was declaring the attack, I got the feeling that Veggie was playing with me. But that's okay. I've got no self-esteem. I got nothing else. I'll pass. I'm going to play a Forest, and then I'm going to pay four for the... 20 toad toad. Oh god, not this guy. <laughs> this is a 3-3. Three, three. My maximum hand size is 20. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, I put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. And when it attacks, I win the game. If there are 20 or more counters on it, or I have 20 or more cards in hand. So... <laughs> In 17 more turns! <laughs> so straight downside, because it gets rid of your max hand size buff from wizard class. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> That's going to trigger Mrs. Bumbleflower, and I will uh, have Mal draw one more card. I'm going to put another counter onto Mr. Foxglove, and it flies. And now we're going to combat. I'll have Mr. Foxglove head in the air towards Maulhound, and Miss Bumbleflower uh, I think dies pretty much anywhere. Nerd Girl, if you don't kill Miss Bumbleflower, then I will give you the next three cards that I draw off of off of her. You gave the person who's hitting me with a 12-12 multiple cards. Oh no. And now I you just... wanna be nice, you want me to be nice to you? Alright, but you also can't hit me with Fox Club for those three turns. And you can hit me with your bunny as much as you want. Okay, I can work with that. So then, uh, Mr. Foxglove for five in the air, and Miss Bumbleflower, you can block too, just don't kill her. Boink. Great. Um, on attack, you've got now five. five. Great. I'm gonna draw two. And I attacked with two or more creatures, so I'm gonna draw another one, and put one counter on the 20 toad toad. Five, I'm gonna gain five. All right, this is, this is, this is it. <laughs> We're doing it. This is the stuff. I'm going to pay two for a Coiling Oracle. When it enters, I'll reveal the top card of my library, and if it's a land, I put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, it goes to my hand. But that's another Miss Bumbleflower trigger. Go ahead and draw a card. Yes. I'm going to put uh, a counter on... Yeah, I, you know what? We're just buffing Mr. Foxglove. Uh, and it's the second time this is resolved, so I will draw two cards how fickle the good time boys are. And then when this enters, I'm gonna reveal this card. It's a Razor Verge Thicket, so I will put it onto the battlefield. Not past turn. All right, Veggie. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna tap a Mind Stone for a Soul Ring. Uh, because it is a non-creature spell with mana value less than Polywog Prodigy's power, I get to draw a card for each of them. I remember this gift for what I do next. <laughs> Oh, no. Draw your cards. Draw your cards. <laughs> While I would debate the morality of Airball using the offspring mechanic to enlist child soldiers into his bird army, I cannot debate the effectiveness. I will have to wipe this board immediately if I am to survive. Mr. Foxglove's uh, bud is up to eight toughness. That's right. Yeah, I'm about all done with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pay X equals nine for a star storm to deal X damage to each creature. In response, you scry a bunch. <laughs> I get to make a spider. That's true. I'll sack six creatures to the Woe Strider and scry until I find something I like. Yeah, I guess I will keep it on top. <laughs> no scries. <laughs> no scries to the bottom. My poor sapperlings will die without having ever tapped for one green mana. Mr. Foxglove. Yeah. Bella will go back to the trash pile. And these will go back to not being able to swing. Uh, and then I'm going to move to combat and uh, punch Veggie in the face for 12 damage. Yep. Because you have an on-demand 7-7. And I will pass the turn. <laughs> I'm gonna just pay eight to replay my commander. That's right, that's fair magic. 
Uh, I'll move to my end step and get my treasure back. <laughs> we're gonna get that. Yeah. To, we're gonna get that up to twenty. <laughs> we are showing. We are showing off all of these decks. <laughs> Here's an island as my land for turn. We'll pay five to bring Zinnia back out, and then we'll pay a seven for Angel of the Ruins. It's a five-seven flyer. When it enters, I can exile up to two artifacts and or enchantments. We're not going to offspring it because I don't have the mana, but we will ship your seven mana artifact and your three mana enchantment with a ton of text. All down. And uh, yeah, I'll have to pass. At the end of your turn, I'm going to pay two. And Nurgle, I'd like to offer you a gift. The gift of a card. Oh, thank you. With Peerless Recycling, I can gift you a card. Uh, and I return target permanent from my graveyard to my hand, but if the gift was promised, I instead return two permanents from my graveyard to my hand. So please, draw a card. I'm gonna return the 20 Toad Toad and Mr. Fox Glove to my hand. Thank you, Fedgy. The gift mechanic is so good! It lets me do big effects for very little mana in exchange for just helping one opponent out. That's a plus all around. I'm going to play Sky Cloud Expanse, and then we're gonna pay one, two, three, four, five, six to replay Miss Bumbleflower. And then I'll pay one for Soul Ring. Nurgle, you can draw a card. I believe I still owe you some cards. Yes, thank you. Put a counter on Miss Bumbleflower. And then I'll spend my final five for Mr. Foxglove. And I, that will be the second time that this was triggered. I will put a counter onto uh, Miss Bumbleflower, and uh, I will draw two cards. And Nurgle, you can draw one. All right. I believe my debt has been paid. Yes, that and you gave me the extra one too, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll pass the turn. Uh, I'm going to spend four to play Path of Discovery, which is an enchantment that says whenever a creature I control enters, it explores. I'm going to tap seven and replay Bellow, Bard of the Brambles. Uh, when he enters, he will explore. So I'll reveal the top card of my library. It is Berserker's Onslaught, which is a five mana enchantment that says attacking creatures I control have double strike. That'll stay on top. What? That's a good one to know is coming. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, one I'm of just us could have just died. I'm just gonna play a uh, mountain for turn, and then I'm going to tap it and tap and sacrifice Mind Stone to just go ahead and draw that before any funny business happens. Okay. Yep, yep. And then I will move to combat, and Path of Discovery is notably now a 4-4 creature with Indestructible and Haste. So who wants to be friends? I won't help kill you. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But that notably, means... Maldhound and Nerd Girl, famous <laughs> history of nonviolence, <laughs> of upheld truces, of well executed treaties. Vegetable, your counter offer? My counter offer is I will give you an 8 8 and well, allow your enchantment to hit the board. <laughs> <laughs> give me an 8 8. <laughs> What's gonna, is anything gonna happen to the rest of my guys? <laughs> just, they, just don't send them here. Don't send them here, okay. Uh, Airball, do you raise or call? <laughs> I will not negotiate. Perfect. I will move to combat <laughs> and I will swing Galta at you. Second place, yes. I'll take 12. Wonderful. I pass the turn. I'm going to start my turn by using Hazel's ability. I will pay two life and tap some tokens to produce mana. So I'll get four mana. And we're gonna start with a Bastion of Remembrance. When it enters the battlefield, I get to create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token, and whenever a creature I control dies, each opponent will lose a life, and I get to gain a life. I will use my last floating mana, just because I have to get something on the battlefield here. And we're gonna play a very sad Honored Dray Leader, a 1-1 one, one with Trample that says when it enters, I can put a plus one plus one counter for each other squirrel or food that I control, currently one. Also, whenever another squirrel or food I control enters the battlefield, I get to put an additional counter on it. So right now I'll just get the one counter. We'll play a land for turn. It's gonna be this Path of Ancestry. And on that end step, I'll get a Hazel trigger and I'll get an extra one one to sort of try to hold down the fort. Pass. All this deal making and leaving me out makes me wanna force you guys to cut a deal with me. The sorcery, each opponent draws a card, and then I draw a card for each opponent who drew a card this way. I just want to point out, entry into the good time boys was offered numerous occasions. 
I have enough material in my hand to kill the table, but I don't have the mana to do it all yet. And the problem is, if I do part of it, then I have a big board state and I look like the threat and everyone knows to kill me. So in these situations, I think you don't turn away. You just come out swinging and hope for the best. Pay two for a Boros Signet. And then we'll pay four for a Helm of the Host. <gasps> it's my favorite card! Oh, oh boy. It's an artifact equipment with equip five. At the beginning of combat on my turn, I create a token that's a copy of the equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary and it is hasty. I do love Helm of the Host. I had a feeling you might let that go. We're gonna pay five and we're going to suit up the Angel of the Ruins. Now in response to the suit up, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just clarifying that the Helm and its hosts are not going to be mean to me. This is, this is the agreement we have? Yes. Excellent, proceed. <laughs> I'm gonna go to combat. Mm -hmm. We'll get a helm trigger. We're gonna make a copy of Angel of the Ruins. I would love to hit that Bastion of Remembrance, but I am bound <laughs> by my word. I was about to kick you under this table. <laughs> uh, to not do that. So instead we'll just make another 5-7 flyer. This one's hasty and I guess we're just going to exile the wizard class in the path of discovery. In response, hey man. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think I have priority gonna... first, so hey man. Oh, true. <laughs> hey man resolves. Talk to me, Airball. <laughs> you know she's murderous. You know the violent intent that dwells within her heart and the hearts of all of all humanity. And I will say this, without the enchantment, I can't kill you. I can put you low enough that she will knock you over with a second thought. I'll declare the 5-7 as attacking veggie. Wow. <gasps> that's not nice. Betrayal at the table. And that's it. Play an island, and I believe I owe you an 8-8. Mm-hmm. Five for Octomancer? I can gift an octopus. What a line, what a line. With no inherent benefit. Okay. But also at the beginning of each end step, I can create a token that is a copy of target creature token that entered the battlefield this turn. Mm. So <laughs> you can take this. Thank you so much. Octomancer feels really good against Nerd Girl and Airball because both of them want to be constantly making creature tokens and then I just get whichever one of theirs is the best. Oh God, that's gonna get weird with Helm of the Host. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh no. Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, I also have a trigger from Miss Bumbleflower. Uh, we're gonna put a counter onto Mr. Foxglove, and we're friends now. Yeah, we're uh, good. So time we boys. have this. We have this. You're thing getting going. second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take your card. Oh. An octopus and a card. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I think Veggie's forgetting who pays him. That's viewers like you. You can come <laughs> over to our Patreon <laughs> and sign up become a, to become part of the show. <laughs> I'm gonna pay two for Quain, itinerant meddler, classic group hug, one, three, uh, tap each player, may draw a card, and then each player who drew a card also gains a life. That will be the second trigger of Miss Bumbleflower. I'm going to put another counter onto Mr. Foxglove. Go ahead and draw another card. Yeah. I'm gonna draw two cards. <laughs> Good time, boys. This was group hug. It's just Veggie and Maltown making out in the corner. <laughs> There's a hug involved in that. You're right. <laughs> Please keep on sponsoring us, Wizards. <laughs> Let's go to combat. I really have the, the deck list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Maltown have his fun with the double strikers. Ooh. And we're gonna cast Wind Grace's Judgment. For any number of opponents, I can destroy a target non-land permanent that player controls. And we are going to hit the Flox Glove, uh, the Galta, and the Helm of the Host. Yeah, I guess I give you more cards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pay two. I'm gonna play Wear Down. It's there. Oh, I found it. Mm. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, but I can also gift a card, and if I do, I can destroy two artifacts or enchantments instead. So, please. Draw a card. I would like to destroy the Bastion of Remembrance and the Angel of the Ruins. I didn't like that. Uh, that's another Miss Bumbleflower trigger. Why not? We'll put a counter onto the Octomancer. And um, 
Uh, I don't need any new friends at this point. Draw a card. <laughs> let's, let's go! <laughs> and finally, I'll get this 20 toad toad onto the board so I don't have to discard the hand size. Uh, I will put a counter onto uh, Octomancer again and draw your final card. <laughs> let's go! Jeez, I need better cards. <laughs> I will pass my end step. Octomancer will trigger, and I would like a copy of that octopus, that 8 8 octopus. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. Best of friends. <laughs> What's happening over there? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it's all love here. It's hard to hug more than one person at a time. It just gets weird. Oh my god, this is actually the magic number. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to tap five. We are going to play. Wild Seer, Scouring Maw. This is a 6-6 six, six with Trample, Enchantment Spells cast from my hand have Cascade. Oh, and then we are going to tap another five. It turns out no game plan is better than gambling. And I am then going to cast Berserker's Onslaught, the previously revealed enchantment that gives my attacking creatures double strike, and I will Cascade for five. So we're gonna flip a land, a land, a land, Garouk's Uprising. Jesus. Creatures I control uh, have trample, and when it uh, enters, if sickles. I control a creature with power four or greater, <laughs> draw a card. Boy, howdy do I. Incredible. <laughs> Whenever a creature I control with power four or greater enters, draw a card. I'm gonna go to combat, and I'm going to swing Bellow at Nerd Girl, because you will not be able to kill Bellow, and then I'm going to swing Berserker's Onslaught and the 8-8 Octopus at Airball. I think I need my creatures. I'm gonna take eight. Okay. Commander. So I'm gonna throw the copy in front of the Berserker's Onslaught. Gotcha. All right. And so take 17. I'll take eight. After the first strike phase, Berserker's Onslaught will get through and deal one point of damage to you, and I will draw one more card. And then I will move to end step, and we get to discard. So I have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need to discard three. I'm going to discard a mountain. I'm going to discard a gruel signet, and I'm going to discard a Sakura tribe elder because I think we are ramped plenty. And then I will pass the turn. Well, now what do you got for three green mana that's going to stop me from killing you? Don't worry about it. Three fogs. <laughs> yeah, triple fog. <laughs> I think the only way we can potentially survive is if I go for it. So. I'll pay four for an insatiable frugivore. A two four, when it enters the battlefield, I get to create a food token. Then I might exile three cards from my graveyard. If you do, repeat the process. Then I can pay four mana, sacrifice X foods and creatures I control, get plus X plus O and gain menace until end of turn. Okay, so in response to that entering in its first trigger going on the stack, uh, rules question, what if it was a three three beast? So uh, the beast within destroys uh, the, the chosen target, uh, mm -hmm. which goes to the graveyard, and then uh, that person gets to put a 3-3 three, three beast token into play, which does not have those abilities. So okay. uh, I, I think... And does anybody else get that 3-3 three, three beast token? Maybe it ends up? That's interesting. I, you know, Perhaps I, someone is a good time boy. Seems like a later, a later <laughs> thing to, to figure out, but... I did not want to have to use my beast within on Nerd Girl. I thought she was the smallest threat to me. I was convinced I would have to protect myself from Airball's flyers or Veggie's terrible, terrible British voice. All right, so the first food will come into play, and I will indeed exile three and repeat the process. Exile three and exile three, leaving only the Insatiable and the Woe Strider in my graveyard. When food tokens come into the battlefield, I get to put plus one, plus one counters. So this will go up to five. The violence between us is unceasing. <laughs> oh my God, this is not my doing. <laughs> I will not take, why do you blame me every time you come after me? I didn't blame you, I just said that it's unceasing. Oh, yeah. I didn't say it was, I didn't say it was needless or even <laughs> unprompted. I merely said unceasing. <laughs> Five mana, and we're gonna play an Ogre Slumlord. A 3-3 three, three Ogre that says whenever another non-token creature dies, I get to create a 1-1 one, one Black Rat with Death Touch. All my rats have Death Touch. I no longer have enough damage because Maltown ruined my plan, so I'm only going to attack with the 6-6 six, six Trampler. I value gambling over my own life, and so I will let the 6-6 six, six through. Sounds like a healthy way to, uh, healthy way to live. Great. I'm going to attempt to try to survive, and to do that, uh, on my end step, I will have Hazel make a copy 
of my beast. <laughs> uh, I would also like a copy of your beast. I'm gonna crack this Mind Stone. Draw a card. You can do it, Airball. It's like Sanguinate. <laughs> oh no, he's looking at my board with those eyebrows <laughs> up. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> I can't do all that much, but I can get Skyclave Apparition into play for its offspring cost. It is a 2-2. When it enters the battlefield, I can exile one target, non-land, non-token permanent that I don't control with mana value four or less. Then when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the mana value of the exiled card. I will get a second Skyclave Apparition because I paid the extra cost. And I'm going to get two triggers. I'm going to exile Garrick's Uprising and Mrs. Bumbleflower. Oh, it's Mrs. Bumbleflower. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mrs. Bumbleflower. No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I guess, if you really feel that way. Play this Thriving Isle tapped, and I'll name Red, and then I'll just have to pass. Great, I would like a copy of Skyclave Apparition. Oh, God. Oh, no. Sure. Those enchantments have haste. I believe her. I can't cascade into anything useful around these parts. No siree. You can cascade, but they won't have haste and attack us. That's right, and that's the only valuable thing they might do. Yeah, I wasn't listening to any of that. <laughs> um, you missed nothing. I'm gonna target Hazel. That is just going to happen. After the two board clears, I felt like I was still hanging in. But now that I've lost Bastion of Remembrance and my commander, I don't know how I'm gonna stay in this. Boo. <laughs> okay, my turn? Mm-hmm. All right, let's, let's start things off. I'm here to help. I'm gonna activate Queen. Everybody may draw a card, and if you do that, you also gain a life. I will agree to these terms. So sick. Okay, uh, I have a thing. Uh huh. It's gonna be, it's gonna seem weird. Okay. On your turn, I'm going to need you to attack. Yeah, that's pretty weird. And uh, I, I need you to attack with pretty much whatever you got. Are you gonna kill me after on your next turn? I'm gonna need you to <laughs> give it all you've got, <laughs> and then we'll see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what, now that I, now are, now that I like, say it, I, I can see how those that Those are would like Amazon warehouse as... terms. <laughs> those are not, that is not a, a good contract. I can agree to the terms of everything I have on the board right now will swing. That's the deal. That was... <laughs> right, that's the deal you're, I wasn't going to take. You're a great negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've, I've read my cards and, re and realized I can, in fact, afford to take that deal. Okay, you know what? Then let's see what happens. Uh, I'm just gonna pay one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Uh, replay Miss Bumbleflower. I'll swing an airball with this beast and the Skyclave apparition, because I just want to trigger from 20 Toad Toad. Uh, I will put a counter on it and draw a card. I'll block the Skyclave Apparition copy with Sinya. And take three? And take three. Okay. I think that's it for me. I'll pass the turn and no creature tokens are made, so Octomancer copies nothing. Uh, I'm going to cast Primeval Bounty. This is a six mana enchantment. Uh, whenever I cast a creature spell, I make a 3-3 green beast. Whenever I cast a non-creature spell, I put three plus one plus one counters on a target creature I control. And whenever a land I control enters, I gain three life. But before this can even make it to the battlefield, it's gonna cascade because of Wild Seer. Sounds great. Tail Tracker Scout. Uh, so this is a 1-3 that can tap to add one mana of any color, and whenever I expend eight, return up to one target permanent card from my graveyard to my hand. Now I expend eight as I spend my eighth total mana to cast spells during a turn, notably two more than I've spent thus far. Then I'm going to play a land for turn and gain three life. Uh, then <laughs> I play Lotus Cobra. Now this will both trigger Primeval Bounty and it will be my expend eight. So I'm going to look through my graveyard for a permanent card. Oh, oh Galt is in here, you guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will make a 3-3 three, three green beast from Primeval Bounty. Uh, two red for an arcane signet. Now because this is a non-creature spell, I will put three 1-1 one, one counters onto the octopus. This will be an 11-11 now. Uh-huh. And then I... No one then. <laughs> and then 
<laughs> I will cast Galta, Primal Hunger. Uh, I will make a 3-3 beast. <laughs> All right, I will move to combat and I'm going to hope that Veggie shares my dream of a flying octopus, uh, but I'm first gonna confirm the airball kill and I'm gonna swing Wild Seer at him. And then everything else that can swing is gonna go at Nerd Girl because I tire of her machinations. So that is going to be Primeval Bounty, Berserker's Onslaught, Bellow, and the Octopus coming to Nerd Girl, and Wild Seer coming to Airball. I am going to play this card. Illusionist's Gambit. Oh God. Um, this is the only instant I could find, but it does the job. Remove all attacking creatures from combat and untap them. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Each of those creatures attacks if able, and they can't attack me or planeswalkers I control. But importantly, I will put a counter onto the octopus, and uh. it gains <laughs> flying until end of turn. You know what, nerd girl, you can draw a card. Wow, Veggie's, <laughs> Veggie's trying to gamble. Uh-huh. So now you will have to redo your attacks, but... I am going to declare them in the same way. I think Airball dies no matter what, and I uh, Nerd Girl has three open mana and has foiled me mm. at numerous stages of this game, and so I do want to make sure she's either dead or losing most of her board to defend against this. All right. I will... Pay two, and I'm gonna cast Plum the Forbidden as an additional cost to cast the spell. I can sacrifice one or more creatures. If I do, I get to copy the spell, I get to draw a card and lose one life. I will sack three creatures to the plum. When a non-token creature dies, I do get a rat with death touch, and I will lose four life and draw four cards. None of those, I got really excited for a second. One of them was a one drop, but it was not an instant. So then I will pass priority. Uh, no effects here. We did it. Sir, sir. We did it. All right, well, that's all for today's and episode. And that's another of episode <laughs> of Decked On. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll tap a green and I will cycle Tranquil Thicket in case I, nope. Hey, pass. Uh, I would like to make a beast. I'll pay two for an arcane signet. You can go ahead and draw a card. I'm gonna put a counter onto this 8-8 octopus and it flies. I'm gonna pay one, two, three, four for the most adorable Tamiyo field researcher oh that God. you've ever seen. Comes in with four loyalty, plus one, choose up to two creatures until my next turn. Whenever either of those creatures deals combat damage, I draw a card, minus two, tap up to two target non-land permanents. They don't untap during their controller's next untap, or minus seven, draw three, I get an emblem. I can play spells from my hand without paying their mana costs. Uh, we're just going to minus two, and uh, we're going to tap Galta and one of your beasts. But what if you didn't? Yeah, you get to draw a card, I get to draw two the, cards. The hatred in my heart that I am not going to live to play the card I have just drawn. Finally, I am going to play what I was trying to sneak you in with at some point, but not this game, a Triskaidekaphile. Uh, no max hand size, I can win with 13 cards in my hand at my upkeep, but it's just going to trigger Miss Bumbleflower one more time. Go ahead and draw a card. We're going to put a counter on the 20 Toad Toad. Also flies, go to combat. There is enough damage in the air to kill you. I will draw a card and put a counter on this. Thanks for all these cards. Are you going to fog me right now? I'm going to tap one green. And I'm going to die. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> good time, boys. Good time, boys. <laughs> no. Together until the end. Now we know what this means. Yeah. <laughs> um. Don't put that in, whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> the last card that Veggie gave me before he killed me was Rolling Ham Sphere. And I will tell you one thing. When we run this back with upgrades, I am going to do whatever is necessary to get this ball rolling. Special thank you to Wizards of the Coast for sponsoring today's early access episode. Don't forget, click the stuff if you liked this. Like, comment, link in the description. Easy as that. They look at all that stuff and we need you to do it. I'm oh, sorry, you look so much like Steve Irwin. I, I'm just getting like the crocodile hunter vibe. Crikey, mate, bring it. I mean, yeah, Photoshop the hat on. <laughs>
think I'm mad about a Crocodile Dundee comparison? <laughs> crocodile Hunter, please. All right. Show some respect for the source material. <laughs> I gotta hand it to Veggie. He piloted that group hug deck with style and aplomb, but just wait until we play the upgraded versions. You'll see there comes a day it catches up to you. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader in TCG accessories. We love their stuff and we know you will too. In fact, every single playmat, sleeve, or deck box featured on this show is an Ultimate Guard product. So make sure to use the link in the description to support our channel and treat yourself to some amazing upgrades. Graveyard oh. Airball, don't forget. Airball and I were doing fine at that time. We were not. <laughs> I would have I liked to be included in that conversation. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not gonna get away from an 11-11 flying, double-striking octopus. We're gonna die. But it was closer than it looked. If Veggie hadn't killed my commander, I would've been able to give all of Maldhound's creatures minus five, minus five, which would've killed the double strike and stopped a lot of the damage, maybe even saving Airball. But thankfully, next time we play, we are gonna be doing our upgrades and I have some really spicy stuff in mind and a ton of things from the actual Bloomboro set. So I'm looking forward to what this deck can do with some upgrades. Moxfield is the best deck list site available. It has everything you need to customize, compare, and collaborate. View and brew the way that works for you. Moxfield is the only way that we can track and share all of our spiciest builds here on the show and whatever Veggie is playing. Make sure to follow our Moxfield profile in the link in the description. I thought we established being a good time boy meant beating up Veggie. No, that is specifically what we established. Yes, it was not. A smile on your face while you do it. The only things that we are clear on are, we don't know what it means, but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> Hugs for everybody. We may not have gotten an alternate wing condition today, but we can always do it the old fashioned way with combat damage. And you know what they say, hair today, upgraded pre-cons next week. We'd like to welcome our very first patron producer. Welcome to the team, OG Show. As a producer level patron, OG Show is going to be helping us to pick decks and themes and guests for all upcoming episodes of Decked Out. And we are super excited to get to work with him. Thanks to this new producer of the show, we have some big plans. So make sure you guys stay tuned to see all the really cool upgrades we're working on. My acorn is missing. Squeak squeakum, squeak squeakity. Did you steal my acorn? Squeak squeakum, squeak squeaker. You've upset Hanny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that face. Hey, come here, baby. We'd like to wrap up the episode by thanking our patrons. Without your support, this show would not be possible. In fact, it is specifically because of patrons like you, Steve, that we're able to keep this show weekly, and we thank you so much for that. If you guys would like to become a part of the team and help us create this wonderful show, please head on over to our Patreon where you can unlock exclusive perks, sign tokens, spell table games with us. You can even have your deck list featured here on the show. And as always, you can support us by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, uh, and that's all we've got for you for today. We'll see you next time on Decked, Decked Out. Out.